You know, something weird happens to a man whenever he goes to a sporting event. Like, take this little practical item here. When the game's over, what exactly do you think you're going to do with a giant finger? I suppose you could give it to your wife, but I have a feeling you'd get one right back. Here's a better idea. Next time you're cleaning your vehicle, think about those hard-to-reach places that your regular sponges just can't get at. I'm talking about in the grill or around the tire rim or even up the tailpipe. But be careful there, eh? And when it comes to the real detail work, like around these door frames, hey, it's time to get serious and call in a Packers fan. week up at the lounge here. Got a comic book convention in the area. What a bunch of weirdos. <laughs> it's like a horror movie up here. Night of a Thousand Heralds. <laughs> I wouldn't even be hanging around, but I got this comic book Aquaman number one. Had it since I was a kid. I figured I could sell it to one of the delegates. Probably get like a hundred bucks for it. <laughs> one of the upsides of the computer age is nerds have money now. Aquaman! Aquaman! Look what just arrived! Wow, yeah, that's, now that's exciting. A cardboard box, eh? <laughs> it's a costume for oh. our guest speaker who arrives tomorrow and the delegates are going to freak out when they see who it is. Really? <laughs> is it a woman? I haven't seen any of those here. No. What? Recognize this? <laughs> yeah, that's the, uh, that's a Jiffy Pop popcorn, isn't it? No! It's the helmet of the greatest TV and comic book action hero in the history of the world, the Silver Wasp. <laughs> What the heck's this here? Well, it's a cane. How old is this superhero here? Huh? It's hey? not a cane! That's the Silver Scepter, the Silver Wasp ultimate weapon in battling evil. And uneven sidewalks. It would be good. Stop that! Stop that! What else you got in there, Harold? I got his costume. I got the rest of his costume. And I got his sidekick's costume, Stinger. <laughs> Stinger can't be here, though. He's got a prior commitment and a court order that says he can't. <laughs> Well, Harold, how can you have a wasp without a stinger, eh? <laughs> Well, I have volunteered to stand side by side with the silver wasp. I shall be stinger! Oh, yes, 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 yes. Oh, that's, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a coupon for dinner for two at Salmonella's restaurant. <laughs> Conveniently located right next to the hospital. <laughs> okay, Mike, cover your ears. Red, you got 30 seconds to get Mike to say this word. Slip. Slip. Yeah, all right. Okay. And go. Okay, Mike, this is a pink piece of paper that causes you to lose your job. What's it called? A warrant. <laughs> no, okay, okay, think about this. Freudian... Are we still playing in English? <laughs> okay, okay. If there's something that you're not supposed to say, but it accidentally comes out in conversation, that's called a... Confession. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, oh, I know. Mike, this is what your mother's got on under her dress. Tassels. <laughs> Time's almost up, Ray. I... Yeah. Okay, okay, Mike. This is something that people are afraid will happen to them in the shower. At home or in prison? <laughs> At home. Oh, oh. Slip. Yeah! Careful where you aim that thing, Dalton. Eh? I see you, Red. Yeah, well, it's not your eyes I'm concerned about. Well, excuse me for a living. 
Hey, would you guys just quit bickering? I'm not bickering. There's a guy that's bickering right there. Oh, please. Okay, you see the book I'm reading here? The Anger Tree by Anthony Anthony. He tells us that the anger tree grows from deep beneath the soil. It, it means that you need to uh, unearth the psychological roots of your conflict. You know, Winston, an apology works just as well. Apology? Apology? That's right. What makes you think I would accept an apology? <laughs> okay, Dalton. Brad says that you're invading his space. But what he's really saying is that you need to develop well-defined ego boundaries. Okay, Red? Yeah. And what Dalton's saying uh -huh. is that you need to control your inner parent. You know, I'm not so sure Anthony Anthony understands men. He's a man. I'm not so sure about that either. I'm just mad at Dalton because he wrecked my pressure washer. I didn't break your pressure washer. You didn't? No, I didn't even use your pressure washer. I have my own pressure washer. I have my own things, yeah, you know, right? right I right. have many things. I've got a, a lava lamp, yeah. some stamps, yeah. a garden gnome. Yeah, OK. Uh, OK, Dalton, you're affluent, all right? Well, then who the heck borrowed my pressure washer? <laughs> what? Hey, look, my truck was really dirty, okay? <laughs> How was I supposed to know that you can't hook that stupid thing up to a fire hydrant? Oh, brother. Yeah, I, I just feel so stupid, you know. We've been mad at each other all afternoon. <laughs> or we should have been mad at Winston, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's yeah. good. Yeah. What you've just engaged in there, yeah. that's called transference. Transference. Yeah. Yeah. Here, let me take another page out of Anthony Anthony's book. You can take them all out, as far as I'm concerned. Can I see that for a minute with some? Can I have a look? Sure. Yeah. It'll really help you out, you know. Is it easy to read? Not bad. Uh, a little dry in spots. Is it? Yeah. Well, I can fix that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Transfer complete, huh? <laughs> something like this could happen. Was I driving too fast? Did the brakes fail? Maybe I forgot I had a freezer on the roof. Is that my fault? I don't think so. I mean, it took four guys at Dalton store to put the freezer up there. There's no way I could take it off by myself. And if the cars these days had a decent sized trunk, I wouldn't need to put the freezer on the roof in the first place. Oh no, I'm telling you, this was an accident. But instead of whining or pointing fingers, today on Handyman Corner, I'm going to show you how, with a little work and imagination, you can actually make something out of an accident. That's what my parents did with me. OK, now, I took the garage door tracks, and I mounted them freezer width on the roof and then down over the trunk of the car. Now I'm just securing the garage door opener itself to the hood. And don't be afraid to use the long screws on this baby. I mean, you really want to get her attached securely there. Might be a good idea to even open the hood and check that you've got a real good grip there. Yeah, that's fine. OK, now all i got to do is put my freezer into place. I don't need this as a garage door opener anymore since I no longer have a garage door. Now it's my automatic roof rack hoist. If you'll notice, I took the roller hardware off my garage doors and attached it to the four corners of my roof rack box, formerly known as my freezer. Likewise, the garage door handle becomes the cleat for my hoisting mechanism. So all I have to do is get my rollers on track and then give the handle the hook. Okay, let's give her a test run and, and don't wimp out, you know. Freezers can handle a lot of weight, plus they keep everything fresh. Best before May 12th.
Of course, now the beauty here is to get my roof rack up onto the roof. Well, I don't have to lift a finger. I just grab my garage door opener and let nature take its course. See, this was no accident. This was a project. Remember, women don't find you handsome. They should at least find you handy. Okay, um, next week we're going to show you how to make great jigsaw puzzles for your kids. <laughs>to you older guys for a minute about your wardrobe. You know, there comes a point in a man's life when there are certain pieces of clothing that he should no longer be wearing. <laughs> like that old pair of jeans you got with the size 32 waist on them. <laughs> okay, maybe you can still pull them on and on a good day you might even be able to zip them up depending on your lung capacity. <laughs> but later on when you zip them down, Kind of looks like somebody tearing open a bag of insulation. <laughs> now, even if you kept yourself in shape, there are some items in your closet that should never see the light of day again, unless it's coming through the crack in the dumpster lid. Like, say, that souvenir rock concert T-shirt from 1967. Just because the band's still embarrassing themselves, still being on tour, doesn't mean you have to embarrass yourself wearing the darn T-shirt. And don't ever think that you can be current, all right? A man of our age has got to wear his ball cap facing forwards. The shoes have got to cover his toes. And the crotch of his pants need to be in the general vicinity of the crotch of his body. <laughs> I got good news for you. If this seems like too much to remember, if you have a wife, you don't even have to. <laughs> you just put on whatever she tells you to, okay? You're just the guy who wears the clothes. We have to look at you. <laughs> remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. If your tank's in trouble and all full of muck, if the ground's getting soft and you feel like a schmuck, Give Rothschilds a call and I'll come in my truck. I'm there in the book. Just look under suck. Man, there's a lot of money changing hands out there. They offered Moose Thompson 75 bucks to pose as the Incredible Hulk. That's a lot of green, believe me. Hey, Mike. Oh, hi, Mr. Green. What do you got there? Oh, what this? Oh, it's nothing. Uh, it's just uh, an old comic book I was going to have appraised. Aquaman number one? Oh, yeah, it is. How about that? Okay, see ya. That better not be my Aquaman number one or you're in deep number two. <laughs> uh, I, see, I, I was planning on that, like selling it uh, uh -huh. for you, like uh -huh. as a surprise. Oh, yeah. How much do you want for it? I want $100 for it, Mike. Well, I'll give you 100 bucks for it. Well, great, hand it over. Well, not my hundred bucks. Like, I'll sell it, and then uh, I'll give you a hundred bucks out of whatever I get for it. No, no, no. <laughs> you go get me an offer, we'll take it from there, all right? Anyway, you can't sell something when you don't even own it yet. Well, my stockbroker does it all the time. <laughs> Uncle Red, I got a problem. <laughs> Just the one? I'm Stinger! Yeah? Yeah, but the problem is the silver wasp isn't coming. What? He bugged off on you? <laughs> yes, he looked possum wake up on the map and it wasn't there, so he's not coming. Oh, man, Harold, how are you gonna get a superhero on short notice? Well, I still got his costume here, yeah. you know? He's really not that much of a superhero anyway, you oh. know? He's kind of old and useless, uh -huh. so I was thinking maybe you could do it. <laughs> well, I can't, I can't be the silver wasp. Oh, yeah! I'll do all the entertainment, I'll sign the autographs, and I'll keep everybody happy. You think we can actually pull it off? Oh, sure, sure, yeah. I'll do all the work and you take all the credit. 
It'll be just like our television show. <laughs> I was out behind the lodge, and I, I like cutting things on there. And I got the uh, circular saw, I just plug that in, and just cut stuff at random, really, is what I like to do. But unfortunately, when I got over to the outlet, which only have the one, and there's something plugged in there, I'm thinking, oh, what the heck is plugged? And he said, it's an extension cord. So I figured, well, I'll just, I don't want to just unplug it. There might be something important at the other end, so. But there's nothing there, and I can't, so I just, I wonder where the heck this goes. And I come around, and I'm thinking, what the heck is, well, there we go, it's a lawnmower. No, it's, of course, there we go, it's a lawnmower. You know, <laughs> yeah, except that's a gas lawnmower. <laughs> so the extension cord keeps, well, now we're getting, that's a pretty good size extension cord on there. And coming up over the fence there and through uh, all the wreck and then goes right across the road there and, and up into the bush. And I'm thinking, holy cow. And so I didn't see Walter come along and I had to raise the wire up to go through the bush. <laughs> You, you kids be careful of that at home. And then I come over and finally I come they, and they, it's tied around a tree. So it's actually, they're using it as a clothesline. So maybe it's an electric clothes dryer of some kind, but it's still not the end. It just keeps going. So I can't fall along all farther. What the heck is this? And now I get there and I notice that it's, it's moving, which means I must be getting close to whoever's using it. So I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to catch some red handed. And I come out there and I see what's going on. And uh, no. Okay, and even the kids don't have the end of it, so I keep going there, and wouldn't you know it, I come over to Dalton's store, and it goes right up the outside wall of his store. So I figure, well, I'm gonna have to go up on the roof to figure out what this is all about. Luckily, my commando training came in handy. And up over the roof, and, and there it is. He's running a huge neon sign plugged into the lodge. So I figured the heck that's why I'm plugger. So now Dalton's all tech comes running out of the store. What the heck's going on? And then he sees that it's me, and it's a whole different tune. So I give him a flick of the wrist. And it's lights out for Dalton. That's my wife's car back there. Once in a while, when she sends me on an errand to say, you know, the mall, she doesn't want me to take the possum van because she's afraid some of her friends will see me in it. So I take her car. But then when I come out of the mall to go home, it looks so much like the hundreds of other cars in the parking lot, I can never find the darn thing. Oh, sure, I know the trick where you press the remote button and honk the horn. But after 40 years of driving the way I drive, I'm at the point where I can't even hear car horns anymore. <laughs> so I got a better idea. I'll give you a clue. Some of you could use one. This car has a power antenna, and I got Bernice to make me a small flag. <laughs> okay, uh, I rewired the horn relay in there, so now instead of the horn honking when I hit the remote, it's going to turn on the radio and the windshield wipers. <laughs> That's because the windshield wipers got the power antenna mounted on it. Then I got Bernice's flag on that. Eh? Looks like she just used an old tea towel or something, which is fine. I was kind of hoping she'd embroider the family crest on there, but I guess a bunch of assorted food stains and a couple of burn marks is close enough. But I'll tell you one thing. When I come out with them all now, I got no problem. Muscles, I guess. We gotta do something, Uncle Red. They're mad. They know you're a fake. Why did you make that speech? Well, Harold, they were just staring at me like they're expecting something, you know, and I didn't give much of a speech. I just said, the Silver Wasp welcomes you guys to the comic book convention. That was it. But the Silver Wasp never spoke. Oh. <laughs> Wasps can't talk, Uncle Red. Duh. <laughs> oh, no, they're coming. Here, here, here. Give him my Aquaman comic. I'm not giving you it to him. I'm not. No, I'm not. You get it. You get it. You get it. Harold, Harold. They're your kind of people. Okay, okay. You know what? I got Aquaman number one for you. Here, take it. 
it, let's go. Good work, stinker. Stinker. Okay. Mr. Green, the deal is done. Oh, uh, you give me the Aquaman comic. I found a buyer, and I think you're going to be very, very happy. I don't. <laughs> Why not? I got. No, I got... no, Mike. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I don't care if you got two hundred bucks for it. It makes no difference. I got an offer of ten thousand dollars. <laughs> That's meeting time, Uncle Red. You guys go ahead. I need to think about killing myself. Okay, my wife is watching, and I really hope you're not. I may not be faster than a speeding bullet, but I just screwed myself out of 10 grand in a single bound. And the rest of you, thanks for watching. On behalf of myself and Stinker, and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, Keep your stick on the ice. Hoping to find a little honey. <laughs> Maybe uh, set up a hive. And if all goes well, there'll be another son of a bee at the lodge one day. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>